gear up as Cash Miller and a team of accomplished guests steer you on an enlightening voyage filled with valuable tips, fresh insights, and effective strategies. Welcome to Marketing Masters, the Agency Power Show. Hello, everyone. This is Cash Miller. I'm the host of Marketing Masters and the CEO of Titan Digital. Today, I've got with me Sarah Losey, favorite daughter media. Yes, she really thinks she's her uh, father's favorite. Um, it leads to arguments at the house, I'm told. You know, we're going to be talking about podcasting today and how you can use it to really build brand awareness for your company. Sarah, it's great to have you on. Tell us a little bit about what you do in your company. Thank you so much for having me. I am the favorite daughter. <laughs> um, my company is really focused on building thought leadership and building brands through thought leadership avenues like podcasting and podcast guesting. I help people figure out their stories, refine those stories and use them to elevate themselves as thought leaders, whether they want to speak at events or be on podcasts, launch their own show, publish books, whatever it is, help them really figure out how to hone that message and lead with personal stories and that personal value. Okay, that's great. Let, let's, you know, first, let's have our audience understand, like, how big podcasting has really become, you know, because we see podcasts, you know, or listen to podcasts all over the place. And there's so many different topics and things, you know, so just so that they understand, like the opportunity that's here, what are you know, how big is it? Podcasting is huge. Uh, it's one of the fastest growing medias right now, and it is my favorite media. Um, it seems to be a common misconception that podcasting is oversaturated because everybody has a podcast or everyone is launching a podcast. But it's actually really interesting if you look at it, there's far fewer podcasts out there than say like YouTube channels. Oh yeah. And people don't see that as being oversaturated there. Everyone wants to have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. But if you actually think about it, all of these podcasts that get launched, so many people, we call it an industry pod fade. So yeah. they start a podcast and they don't make it past episode seven, episode 10. So yes, all of these podcasts have been started, but it's a much smaller number for podcasts that are actually active and putting out content. Yeah, there's like, you know, and you can really see this through some of the guesting sites that exist, you know, because whenever you're looking to be a guest, you know, you're going to look at um, the podcast and see when the latest episode was and things like that. And you really do see how many have like dropped off. You know, they, they did, yeah, six, seven episodes, maybe 20 or something over a couple of years, but it can be a, a hard thing to stick to, you know, if you're going to use it as a strategy, you know, just because of, you know, you, you've got content or, you know, creation, or you're bringing on guests, production, you know, uh, side of things to actually produce the episodes. There's a number of, you know, factors that go into it to make it successful. So it's not as oversaturated and your comparison to YouTube is, you know, really, uh, um, you know, spot on because, you know, yeah, you never seem to have enough YouTube channels. So why can't there be any, you know, more podcasts? Yeah. And then it also goes down to niches and, there might be a hundred thousand podcasts, but how many of them are talking about the topic you talk about and how many mm -hmm. of them are aimed at your very specific audience? So yeah. I think it was John Lee Dumas who said niche down until it hurts. So the farther you niche, the less there is in that space, the less white noise, the less competition. Yeah, I think, and in some cases, you know, I've talked to a few guests that do podcasts of their own. You know, sometimes the, a podcast isn't necessarily meant to go on forever for that mm -hmm. particular type because of the topic itself. Like you say, if you take the a niche down and you know, you're looking at, okay, hey, we're talking about this, how much can you talk about that? So, you know, one of the things that you know can be considered is doing um, like limited series podcasts, you know, for that. And then maybe you pivot and you come up with another topic so that as a host you become known. You know, but you segment into different series and such and promote them. You know, there's like a lot of different things you could actually do. So, you know, like for one, I have a question. Do you have a podcast? I do. Uh, I have a podcast. It's relatively new. We launched in June. It is called Branded. 
and it is a comprehensive guide to creative branding. So we talk all about how to build your personal brand and everything that goes into it and then how you can use that personal brand or your professional brand to really grow uh, as a person, as a creator, as a professional, and use it to elevate yourself as a thought leader. Well, there you go. Because, okay, so if we talk about how do you find what you should be talking about, you know, like specific categories, because like you say, is there anybody in the area you're considering that's really doing anything on the podcasting? So talk about um, how, you know, a business, if if a business owner is thinking of, I want to do a podcast, um, you know, what should they be considering so that they can be able to bring on guests, they can build an audience over time so that you have listeners and whatnot, you know, what's going to go into this? Uh, well, as far as choosing your topic, I kind of have a little slogan that I say, use your outside voice. And when I say that, what I mean is back when we were kids, we would be always told to use our inside voices. But there are those times that we're just so excited. We are bubbling over. We have to just scream about something or we will explode. And we cannot use that inside voice. That is a kind of excitement and passion I want people to have about the topic they want to have a podcast about. The, those topics that you can talk about for hours, the ones that you're with your significant other, someone brings it up and they roll their eyes and say, don't get them started because they'll just keep talking about it. Those are the topics that you really should lean into. Mm -hmm. But for a business, uh, kind of a misconception with branded podcasts and podcasts for businesses themselves are that you're supposed to talk about your business. And you're really not. Yeah. That's the difference between a podcast and an ad. It's not about your business. It's about what you value. So if like Jeep were to put out a podcast, they probably have one. They wouldn't talk about Jeeps. They would talk about adventure and getting out into the wild, getting off of the paved roads, things that they're really passionate about as a company, mm -hmm. things they value. And then it's going to give that connection to their listener so when they go to buy a car and they're thinking, you know what, I want a car that can help me with going on adventures because that's something I'm passionate about, they're going to make that connection back to Jeep. Yeah, that's actually um, a really good example because in video, you have what's known as a, a type of video as a brand anthem. Mm -hmm. And throughout the brand anthem, you know, it could be Jeep or somebody else, but you, you see the products but you, they never talk about the products there. It's always in the moment, you know, mm -hmm. so you're out on the adventure, you know, and that's the whole idea, right? Is you're doing the adventure and you're just happen to be using this particular product. You know, it could be, um, you know, like there's some like hiking boot brands and stuff that they do that kind of stuff and, you know, camping equipment and whatnot, you don't, you know, the, the equipment's, you know, just kind of part of the, uh, the set. Yeah, that they're doing, but the, it's all about the adventure and getting out there and you could do podcasts pretty much the same way. If you had a hiking podcast and talking about all the greatest places to go hiking, you know, well, you know, that hiking podcast could be, you know, done by, a, you know, I say a hiking footwear company or, you know, like Timberline or something like that. And, you know, or it could be camping equipment, whatever it is, but they're the ones that are sponsoring, but they never really talk about the equipment. They just talk about how great it is to go camping and all these like, like great national forests or something. Exactly. It all comes down to like the principles in marketing, which are not marketing a product, you're marketing the end result. So when, it, when you're going to start a podcast as a way to market, you're not talking about your company. You're talking about the values and what it can lead to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great. So, you know, how would you go if you needed, you know, you wanted to do this? How would a company go about exploring? How does it figure You know, how do you figure out what you're going to want to do? Like, you know, what are some of the, the tips you would have? to figuring out your voice and stuff for it. Because if you're going to do a podcast, that's part of what you're doing, you know, because you're going to use it to amplify everything you're doing. Yeah, I think the first thing is to really make sure that you have clarity in your branding itself. And that's something that even if you don't want to have a podcast, if you have a brand, you should work on having that brand clarity. And there's a lot that goes into it. But part of it is like, what are your values? What are the things that 
you want to promise to your audience. So what are your brand promises? What are your guiding principles? How do you present yourself in a way that's authentic? And when you have that clarity, it's going to lead into what you should be talking about because it's going to be those things that you do value in your mission for your company, what you see for the future. Okay. Okay. So let's reverse it instead of being the host, if you're the guest, because some of what you were just saying would lean into you know, being a guest. So what's the value in being a guest on podcasts? Because we've kind of established, yeah, there's a bunch of them out there, you know? Um, so why would you want to be a guest? And then how would you go about figuring out where you should be a guest? Yeah, being a guest on a podcast is really, really great for a marketing plan um, if you do it the right way. And podcasts are such a unique media because they're built on connection and they're built on trust. So if I'm listening to your podcast every week, I trust you. I trust what you have to say. I believe that you do know what you're talking about and you're a thought leader and an expert on your topic. So if you guest on a podcast, you get to almost capitalize on that trust and that connection that the listeners have with that host. So a host bringing you on their show is almost them recommending you and saying, this is somebody that has a valuable message for my listeners. Mm -hmm. So you get to use that trust. All right. So you're tapping in. You're able to, for one, you know, the host is essentially saying, I approve of this person in a way, you know, to their audience. And then you also have that, um, you know, they become trusted if they're, you know, especially if they're appearing on different places. You know, there's um, a thing in like uh, for content, they have the as seen on you know, mm-hmm. so as you know, on this site and this site and this site, and it'll all be big brands, big companies and what, does it kind of work the same way if you get on the right podcast? Um, sort of. I mean, I definitely, I have it on my website, a featured on with some of the places I've spoken, some of the shows I've been on, but I think it really just comes down to being a really great guest and doing, um, doing the host justice. So if you are going to capitalize on the trust that they have with their listeners, you don't want to take advantage of that. You want to make sure that you are giving them value and you're giving the listener something worth listening to and really adding to the show and not making the show about you. So it's not something that should be used as like a sales tactic. You don't want to sell anything on a podcast. You just want to share and tell stories and give value and give information. Right. So now I've been on a few other podcasts and stuff, though, and they end up some of them, depending on how they're run, they they actually do just ask, hey, what about, you know, tell me about your company and tell me about, you know, they have you know, like, is there value in those? Because some of them are kind of fairly standard. You know, it's not like you're not really showing thought leadership. It's almost like an advertisement. Yeah. And so and you see those and, you, and until you go on. I mean, you can listen to episodes, obviously, beforehand and see if that's the the trend that they use, you know, the way that they go about them. But, you know, is there value in those ones? You know, do they need to be diving deeper, you know, to find other, you know, like better opportunities? Because if you talk about leadership, you know, you want to be able to show off expertise yeah, in, in your field. You do want to tell your story to some degree, but it seems like, you know, you can end up kind of repeating it from one to another. Yeah, I think having the same story on different shows is okay because they're being listened to by different people. You're probably the only person who listens to every single podcast that you go on. Uh, If you do listen to every podcast that you go on. So I actually tend to tell people to have a few stories that are their go-tos just to make it easier in the moment. Because if you don't do this a lot, like it's a very high stress situation for someone that doesn't go on podcasts. So having those stories that you know you can rely on as long as they fit within the conversation. But the podcasts that do feel more like ads, it's not that they're not valuable. It's just a matter of, is this something that you would listen to? So if you listen to a podcast and you think, oh, I would never listen to this, don't go on the show. It's you're not gonna have the connection with the host or the connection with the audience that you're looking for. So you want, it's kind of like write the book that you wish you could read. Go on the shows you want to listen to. Go on the shows that you can really have a good vibe with the host and it can be a really natural conversation. 
But with shows that do feel like an ad, there is still value there. If they do have a listenership, you do get to reach it, but you also can repurpose the content. So you can take that and put it on your website or break it into smaller pieces, make it into reels or TikToks or mm -hmm. uh, quote graphics, whatever it is. And you can push that out on your own social. So it's a really good way to get more content, but to really have the best experience as a guest, you want a show that really resonates with you. Okay, so you mentioned a few things as far as promoting the shows you're on. So let's go into there for a second. So, sure. You know, like, okay, if you're going to be on a podcast, you know, you've gotten the opportunity and such, um, what are the things you should be prepared? You know, you've got your primary talking points, but from a promotion standpoint, after that, you know, you've been given the links to the episode, what are some of the best practices to maximize the value of the appearance? Yeah, you want to push it out as much as you can. And um, the first thing that I do is get it up on my website. Um, I have a blog post for every podcast that I've been on. And there's, I, I say there's two ways to put a podcast on your website. There's the way that it's just sharing the episode and you kind of copy a, a blurb from the show notes and it's just, mm -hmm. here's my episode, here's the content but you can actually take it a step further, take the conversation and turn it into an actual blog because people are very specific in how they take in media. So not everyone listens to podcasts. And if you've ever met someone who doesn't listen to podcasts and you suggest they listen to your podcast, they're gonna say, thanks, but I don't listen to those. <laughs> they're not just gonna be like, okay, well now I listen to podcasts. Yeah. So if you can take that content and turn it into a blog, then you're going to reach the audience that doesn't listen, but does read. And that's not going to be the same as just the blog with the show notes because show notes aren't really that readable. Show notes are written for robots. They're written for SEO. Yeah. They're written to be indexed by Google. You put the transcript, nobody actually reads the transcript. They're just there for the SEO keywords and for accessibility. But if you actually turn it into a narrative and you just dive into the topics that you talked about, you can still link it to the episode itself, mm. but that's going to reach a whole different level of, of audience because not everybody does listen. Well, what about um, social media, you know, promoting things like uh, I recently talked to somebody who runs a platform called wave and okay. there it has the ability to create short form. So say you only have, the audio of the podcast, they can, it can uh, create clips that are still tied to the audio and then you use them as short, like real videos and stuff on TikTok and things like that. So what are some of those kinds of things, you know, like that, you know, are there some other things you could be doing, you know, to be able to, you know, promote that podcast and that episode more, because I say you're promoting the host and the show, but you're promoting yourself as being on it too. Yeah. There's going to be so many different ways that you can promote your episode. And it kind of comes down to knowing where your audience is. So if you're getting a lot of engagement on Facebook, Facebook is going to be the best place to put that episode. If you're getting a lot of engagement on Instagram, that's where you should put that episode. So it's not necessarily a one size fits all. It's not every single episode has to go on every social media platform. Go where your audience is, meet them where you are. And one of my favorite ways to connect with an audience is actually going to sound super outdated, but it's email um, and having yeah. an email list and that's active and that are, that's engaged. People are opening your emails. They're way more likely to see your email mm. than they are to see a social media post. I think the algorithm has it at like 6% of your followers will actually see your posts. Yeah, depending and, on which platform you're on, but you know. Yeah, so if you're yeah. not hacking the algorithm, your reach is actually gonna be pretty low. Mm -hmm. So use the media that you own, use your email list, use your website, and really find where people are paying attention to you and give that your focus. Yeah, I think the email is a good idea because often it's, you know, if you're building a list, you always got to be, you know, giving them something fresh, you know, something new. If it's a newsletter, it depends on what your the purpose of your email is, but it's still going to help you be top of mind with, mm -hmm. you know, people that are either existing customers, potential customers, whoever subscribed for, you know, however you built the list, you know, so that's a, a good way to really put it out there because again, you're showing, because the idea is thought leadership anyway, you know, so that's, 
exactly what that is. And it, because it's a podcast, if there's video and stuff that goes with it, if you you know have that, then you have the chance that they can actually watch. You know, depending on which platform you're sending them to, but if you're sending them to your website and your own like blog section or whatnot, um, you could have the video posted in there, and then they can you know see you. And because a lot of times you have a customer base that doesn't really know who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it allows you to, you know, really introduce yourself. They can hear if they want to, li- you know, listen to it for a while, you know, however long it is. Yeah. That's one of the other reasons I really love podcasting is because it's so personal and it puts you out there as your brand. And I always, I hate the term like business to business. Cause I don't think that exists. Like you don't talk to a business, you don't interact with the mm, business, yeah. you interact with the people. And if you've done anything on social media, especially like from a business page, you will always get the most interaction on a post that highlights the people behind the scenes. Mm. So posting anniversaries of your employees, posting events that you guys went to, those are what's going to get traction because people want to engage with people. They want to yeah. connect with people. So with a podcast, it's a conversation that you're almost a fly on the wall for. You get to listen to what they're saying, listen to their thoughts, hear their perspective, see them speaking if it is a video podcast. And that's so much more powerful than just any type of traditional marketing. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, if you, so if you want to be a guest, how are you going to go about f- figuring out where to be a guest? You know, and, you know, so what does the process look like? Because there can be some legwork, you know, it's not... Hey, you know, because, yeah, there's a zillion podcasts out there, but you got to find ones that are the right fit for what you are doing, you know, appropriate places. How do you go about finding them? And what does it look like even to try to get that invite onto the podcast? I love that you said that there's going to be legwork because that is so, so true. And there's so much that you should do before you ever reach out to a podcast. You want to figure out what your story is, what your value is, those messages that you want to send and really have that set message, that set story. Mm -hmm. So that when you pitch yourself to a podcast, you're not saying like, Hey, this is what my company does. Can I talk about it? Because mm-hmm. that's just saying, hi, can I advertise on your show? Yeah. You want to be able to say, this is what I'm offering. This is the value that I can bring to your listeners. I talk about this topic. Here's some key takeaways. So the first piece of like legwork you got to do is really hone your message. And for some people, that's really easy. They're natural storytellers, natural talkers. But for other people, that can be really, really difficult. And it's yeah. something that takes a lot of work. So you well, have to be ready to put that time in. Yeah. And when you're honing that story and stuff, it is your story of whatever, you know, you've done, but also you have to establish credibility. Mm -hmm. You know, why, why are you, you know, because most podcasts, you know, if you're brought on, it's because you're an expert or something. And, you know, a lot of them are that way. So why do they bring you on? Okay. Yes. You've got your story about your business and whatnot. You want to be talking, you know, be able to talk about it, but what makes you credible? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, as a guest and stuff. So you have to kind of interweave both, you know, um, and they want to know if it's something interesting. You know, I've been mm-hmm. on a number of pod, like I'm a, I'm an army vet and, uh, I started my, yeah, thanks. Um, I started the agency, uh, as a way to get out of the military, mm-hmm. but I often tell the story, like what makes it interesting? Well, one of my first clients, um, I found my first client while I was still in the military and I was freelancing. But I have a story of uh, communicating with the client while I was stationed in Afghanistan and they didn't know I was there, you know, and it was first pay-per-click account I ever ran. Yeah. And so if you have something like what makes you compelling that it's just like, wow, I would really want to bring this guest on because you just have something really interesting. Yeah. Um, We run multiple, you know, this podcast and another one, but we're actually going to do like a limited series of one that just says interesting people. Yeah. Um, because of the fact that we've had some guests that are so interesting, we just want to talk about their experiences. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and so it's like, what are, why are you compelling? Why, why should I interview you? You know, exactly. Why you be and that's not something that you prove while you're on the show. That's something that you prove before you ever pitch. Yeah. So you need to do that work ahead of time and really figure out what is interesting about you. 
And that's why the story pieces are so, so important. Mm -hmm. Because if I were to pitch you like, hey, I am an expert on podcasting and bring me on your show and I will give you the top 10 statistics right now about podcasting. Yeah. Or you that's... can just Google the top 10 statistics on yeah, podcasting. Right? Like that, you don't need me. Yeah. And someone else is gonna say like, okay, well, I don't think those stats are accurate anyway, so why are we even listening to her? So mm -hmm. you can be discredited and you'll be turned down because it's just not interesting. But if instead I say, hi, I've been in the podcasting space for this many years and I've experienced this and I would love to be able to share what I learned by doing this, that's going to be more interesting. That's a personal experience and that's, you can't argue with it. Yeah. You can say these statistics are not accurate, but you can't say, well, you did not experience that. You can't say I'm lying. Mm -hmm. So having those stories be your lead and the kind of key takeaways are going to be the lessons that you learned throughout your story. That's how you're going to capture that audience and being able to tell it in a way that is compelling is a skill and taking the time to hone that skill ahead of time will be really, really helpful. Yeah. Cause often, you know, business owners there, they are the face of the business, at least to some mm -hmm. extent. So if you're going to be, you know, putting yourself out there, you have to remember you're representing the business and you want to, what is interesting about you, the business and everything. Cause you know, that's what people are going to be picking up on. You know, it's an aside of like, Oh, we, they do this, you know, they do this service or offer this product. Cause the first thing they're hearing about is you, your experience and stuff. And, you know, in some cases, let me say if your you know, clients, customers are, you know, listening to it, there's going to be, um, sort of more in-depth information that they would otherwise know. Yeah, you know, it makes mm -hmm. it more compelling potentially to do business with you. Yeah, nobody wants to listen to someone reading out of a textbook. So yeah. like having, being an expert and being a thought leader are two very different things. So anyone can be an expert if they know more than the lay person about a topic, mm -hmm. but being a thought leader takes it a step farther. That's actually being able to have an in-depth, like really thought provoking conversation, add more to what people are already talking about, give those new perspectives, give that experience. And that's going to set you above just the expert on the topic. Yeah. How does, okay. So if I've got my story down and everything, how do you end up working to actually get booked on podcasts and stuff because okay i know what i'm going to pitch them you know that i know what makes me compelling and all of that but now what's the actual you know what's the work you got to do to actually get invites on to different podcasts you know what what do you have to do if you're booking for people what do you have to do for them so there's three methods uh that i usually use for podcast guests uh either whether i'm booking myself if i'm booking clients whatever it is and the first one is you can go through um, like an agency. You can have someone do it professionally for you. It is one of the things that I do offer. Um, so that's the first one is having someone do it for you. The second is just kind of the cold call method. If you go on any podcast website, they're going to have an email address or they'll have social media and you can just reach out and pitch yourself to your to their show. Or there are some services. Uh, the one that I really love is Podmatch. And it's kind of, I call it the online dating of podcasting. Yeah. And you just get matched to shows and then you pitch yourself there. So it always will, though, come down to the pitch. So how yeah. do you pitch yourself to the show? And that's why you need to figure out what that value is before you ever pitch. So that when you do send the message, it's you're able to say, hey, this is what I would love to talk about. Here's the value that I offer to your audience. Because hmm. that's going to get you booked a lot faster than like, hi, I'm an expert on this. Yeah. So if you're really going to be building up, you know, thought leadership and stuff, how many podcasts should you actually be doing in any when and what kind of time frame? There really isn't a set number. It's not one of those like one size fits all. And I don't necessarily think it's about how many shows you go on, but it's about the shows that you go on. Because I would rather go on two podcasts that have an audience that really aligns with me and mm -hmm. um, is really engaged than go on 20 podcasts that they don't really care what, what I have to say. Yeah. So it really is quality over quantity. So look for the ones that you really resonate with the host. They're shows that you would want to listen to and they do match your audience and you, it has to match your audience very, very strongly. Cause 
if you're talking to an audience of like 50 year old men, but you're talking about building a business, 50 year old men probably do listen to podcasts about golf, but they're not listening to that golf <laughs> podcast to learn about building a business. Yeah. So yes, that's your audience, but that's not what they're interested in. So you have to have your audience, but also the interest there It has the topic has to fit. The niche has to fit and have it be a host who you see eye to eye with. So it doesn't end up being contentious. I've seen that happen oh, where yeah. it's, things accidentally go either political or they just, it goes sour. Yeah. And you could tell that they did not do research about the host or the host didn't research the guest. So yeah. listen to the show, make sure like this is someone I can have a conversation with. This is someone I can feel like I'm being myself with so you're not having those just canned responses it's not super buttoned up like i basically am reading from a script you want it to sound natural so make sure that it's a host or a guest that you can connect with yeah yeah and you find a lot of them you know depending on the show that you're going on um are pretty easy to get along with you know and connect and whatnot but you do a little bit of research on the front end because if you don't yeah you could end up on really the wrong one yeah um there is so some podcasts um cost money to be on you know mm -hmm. i know that this is kind of you know comes up once in a while and stuff what are your thoughts on those particular podcasts Honestly, as someone who has been in the production side and understands how hard it is to monetize a podcast, if you have the audience and the reach and the like the marketing power behind your show that it's worth paying for, charge. I yeah. mean, it is expensive to run a podcast. It's a lot of work to run a podcast. So if you're giving a, a someone else access to a platform that you've put a lot of time and investment behind, and it has that power to be worth them investing into it, I don't see anything wrong with charging for it. I haven't done it. Um, I've, yeah. I'm not, I don't think I've ever paid to be on a show either. Yeah. Um, I think I paid a skip the line fee uh, to, get, <laughs> to get my episode out faster. I did yeah. do that, um, but I've never actually paid to be on a show. Mm -hmm. But if someone's willing to pay and you're putting, you're the one spending all the money to produce the show, let them contribute. Honestly, I don't see anything yeah. wrong with it. Well, what about the other side? Should you be as a guest? Would you want to pay to be on a show, or is it something that, you know, only a few shows would be worth doing that? Because I've I've run into some, you know, that are you know, looking to do that. Um, I ran into one that's almost a bait and switch a little bit. That they they ran two shows. So one is the free version that you could be on for mm -hmm. fifteen minutes or something, and then there's the sponsored version, which they pitch you and say, "Hey, if you want to be on this one too, but it costs." Yeah. So I've seen the, a few of those kinds of things going on. Yeah, I mean, I would be careful with doing it um, if it's going to be like the bait and switch because people talk. And especially the podcast industry is very, very close knit. It's very much a community and you're going to get a reputation really fast. Um, I did just get matched, quote unquote, uh, from uh, on Podmatch with a show that did send me this whole thing about how much I pay. And I was like, OK, well, thank you for the consideration. But no, thank you, because I'm just not in a position where I feel like I need to pay to be yeah. on a show. And if you're going to do it that way, you need to be able to back it up. You need to be able to say like, these are my download numbers. These like, this is my reach and make it seem like it is a good investment mm. because basically you're asking them to sponsor the episode. So yeah. be able to give them what you would show to your sponsor when you pitch to be a, to be sponsored as a show. Yeah. There's, there's one show, um, out, well, multiple shows, but I've seen where some famous people, Okay, there's this guy named Chris Voss, who is a master like negotiator, worked for the FBI and stuff. I've read some of his material. He's actually really good. Okay, well, he runs a podcast, but there's another guy. It's like the Chris Voss show, but the, the host is not Chris Voss. I think they run it under their umbrella, right? But he's got a different person hosting that particular show. So... You sign up with the eye thinking that, oh, I'm going to be, be on a podcast with Chris Voss. This would be great. And then you're not, you know, it's like, yeah. So, 
it's doing that. I mean, I think there is a paid show that you can be on with Chris Voss if you want to pay the kind of money, you know, that they're asking. But um, but you have this other one. It's the Chris Voss show, and then it's you know, but you can't be you know, you're not going to be on with Chris Voss, you know, not the real one. <laughs> yeah. You know? So Make, making decisions like that, it's really going to come down to what you're looking for. Yeah. And a show that is so big that it's charging you to go on, like you will have a high reach, but it still doesn't necessarily matter. Like think of what you're going to get out of it. Think of if what, whether you're going to resonate with their audience. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had uh, some of my clients get booked on some small shows that have people reach out to them and want to work with them. But then I've also gotten clients booked on some of the top shows in the world and yeah. nothing came of it. So unless you're kind of at the point where, you know, money is money, let's just throw it out there, see what sticks. Yeah. I would probably stay away from paying unless it's a really, really perfect fit and you just know there's going to be that return. Yeah. Well, this has been a great discussion, Sarah. How would people get a hold of you? They need somebody to help them, you know, book them on shows and whatnot. Um, how do they reach you? Uh, well, my website is favoritedaughtermedia.com, and I do actually have a free gift um, if anybody is interested. I talked about really getting that brand clarity and building that brand before you go on a podcast. So I have an ebook with the eight things you need to consider. So if you go to favoritebrandguide.com, uh, you can download that for free. Um, it's also found on, under free stuff under favoritedaughtermedia.com. And what was the name of the podcast again that you uh, um, have started that's brand related? Yeah, I am the co-host of the Branded Podcast uh, with Larry Roberts. And you can listen to that anywhere you listen to shows or at uh, listentobranded.com. It's great. Well, this has been a really interesting topic. You know, like podcasts, they're all over the place, but there are so there's so much value because, you know, the, you if you are guesting or hosting, there are different things that you, it will bring to your business, you know, a number of ways that you'll benefit. So, you know, if you're interested in doing it, you can reach out to Sarah. Yeah. I say, cause you might need an expert in being able to either host or be a guest. Um, again, my name is Cash Miller. I'm the host of Marketing Masters, CEO of Titan Digital. It's been another great episode. Thank you for tuning in.